So many people with many health problems need to drink more water. The classic is diabetes because of sugar and stuff causing there to be a need of excess water because you need to dilute everything. Excess thirst because of hormones and the body not work as much. But cystic fibrosis too because of salt concentration. When you're just sick from the flu or viruses. And we have a ton more examples. Basically, you need more water. It's a bad stuff or too much of anything you can use in your body. Um, sensory issues. Or just to flush out stuff out of your body. And that can be a ton of different issues. Another reason why you might need more water is that um, or you have to be called dehydrating because of sensory issues or interception, which is issues like knowing part of your body. It so prevents you from drinking as much because maybe you don't like the taste of drinking or feel. Or drinking is um, boring to you or you don't know that you're thirsty. Another one is if you have mobility issues or a bunch of issues or migraines and stuff, it might be hard for you to get up and actually physically get a drink. You know, it becomes more important. Also, if you drink less water, theoretically, you're less likely to get all the bad side effects from drinking if the water is poison or something. So here I want to talk about a variety of ideas to maybe get rid of the problem of people not being able to drink enough with an artificial organ continues to connect the artificial organ series. I started. These are all this might be pretty futuristic to some extent, but I like to put out ideas for the future. So one is to design a sort of concentrator. Now this concentrator could be worked on many th things, but it would work by taking the salt and everything that needs to be excluded and concentrating it. So then the water can be recirculated back. Your urine is already about 95% water. So concentrating it so it circulates, so you theoretically do, um, still get back that 95% and just poop out the salt with a bit of chemical ones, but that's too strong for your body. When you dehydrate it, that can go down by tens of percent and it can be a lot more of chemicals. From clear to yellow pea, for example. So if you always pee in yellow pea, you could get a lot more water back into your body. Now there's ways to even make this more efficient is if we don't fully concentrate the pure water, we add some minerals back because your body also loses minerals constantly throughout the day from sweating and other things that are not peeing directly or pooping and stuff like that. Or even this loss, even when you're growing, you might need more. So if we can adjust the concentrate where it concentrates out and reach a perfect level, it might be even with a little more efficient. Now we can't make a urine stream too concentrated with a hand because that will damage the urinary tract there by forming deposits or it might make the pH a little bit too extreme. So this it definitely does have a limit. One way we might be able to get rid of some deposits though theoretically in the future is instead if we sift that the stream goes into um some of the stream actually theoretically goes into pooping and stuff like guano like bats and birds make and some lizards and reptiles also make. Therefore the salt so you but you might be pooping out salt and then to in little microdoses. But then you have to be careful not to uh, upset that part of the taser's track. This is probably less sensitive, but I don't fully know. And for like future experimentation. But yeah, that idea is way more out there. Another way that you could maybe do it is if the salt um, gets stored in a little place, some excess salt, the excess salt that's stored can get released depending on when your body needs it, so you can go longer without salt or something. Salt or something. 
or it only gets dissolved later on when it feels like you need more hi hydration. So this acts as a, um, so when you're very well hydrated, you're drinking a lot, your body pumps out more salt and dissolves it. So it acts like a little buffer zone more. And when you really start being dehydrated, it keeps more water in your body, which your body naturally does with the yellow pee and everything. I'm saying extremify it. Is extremify a word? But you get what I'm saying. So, another idea, kind of along this line, is that about 2.1% of the rest of the pee is um, organic stuff or semi-organic stuff like uric acid, the first one, or urea, the second one I listed there, the chemical formula. And this one, it's a lot of potential for reuse here. You turn some of that back into water, or just get it out of the thing so your body doesn't need to pee as much because part of your body's natural process is pumping that stuff out so you don't have to. So it fills out and doesn't stay in your body as a toxin. But if it's already converted something else, it's not a toxin. So, one is all these things that are primarily nitrogen, are just nitrogen, carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen. Now, Hydrogen oxygen you can turn into water and add some more water back. Carbon you can burn and turn into CO2. And that can work in both parts will get rid of some oxygen, so less oxygen. Nitrogen you can turn into this N2 like this in the atmosphere. How to do this? Well there's complicated microbial fuel cells and stuff like that. They use microbes with specific enzymes to do all this stuff that well. And efficiently, but they're very delicate and hard to set up and don't work very efficiently because everything's not hooked up together. Another one is to use a, a more man made fuel cell with something like a polymer electro electrolyte, which are usually protein exchange membranes, PEM. The problem with those is they can be a little bit delicate and they don't absorb everything close enough. And they work better with H plus hydrogen. Hydrogen as it turns into H plus. Now one way around that is if we combine of certain technologies. So if we put absorption crystals on this in a thin layer, it absorbs the urea and the stuff and everything that's reactive. Absorbs on the surface, then put a small electrical then put a small electrical current. And that electrical current turns this stuff into a hydrogen, a tiny bit of hydrogen ions that float and then go through a polymer electrolyte fuel cell in a high efficiency. So you have to pump in electricity, but you get more electricity out. A more advanced method might be if we use, start using enzymes from bacteria and stuff to make it better at converting stuff into what you want. And then also maybe you can exchange more than just the more than just the highs and other stuff too. That's another more futuristic way of recycling is just to turn the all this urine stuff into um proteins so there's not a protein deficiency or useful nutrients like some cows and stuff do. Then you need an escape port for the gas or proteins or whatever, of course. But this could save, I calculate, about 8 to 9 percent of the water in your body because the 2.1 percent of this other stuff you can turn into about 8 to 9 percent water and was to take count how much less you filled out because now you only have to fill out with the salt and inorganic stuff. Now, another one is if we figure out how to better fill out salt, we can put certain salts and minerals back into the body after they digest it. And that way we can save this on the salts and stuff you need to eat and stuff. But the certain salts, but this will this will more efficient if we can do precise control. Certain nutrients need more. You might sometimes need more calcium than say sodium. You have enough sodium. So if we can fill out this calcium specifically we can lower the amount of urine needed because then urine's pumping out calcium and sodium, but let's say you need all the calcium you can get. That's another 
idea. Another, some other ideas that are also a little more out there for my work is trying to extract more of the liquid from other parts of the digestion, such as pooping. So you put out more salt too, so it might help some people with diarrhea. Well, thank you very much for listening. Please like and subscribe, and it really helps turn out. We're trying to reach a thousand subscribers a year, four thousand WhatsApps, which is really hard. Will you help? I, I think you can do it. Or if you have any ideas for future videos, comments, or suggestions, please leave them in the comments section below. Or just any questions. And finally, please like and subscribe, it really helps the channel out. Again, thank you very much. Goodbye.